Greetings, saints, in the most wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is an honor this morning to minister to you the word of God. I just want us to get straight to today's business. Kindly open with me the book of Romans, chapter 18, chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. Today we are speaking about the generous love of God. How great is our God this morning? Amen. According to this verse, Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39, it reads thus. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced and beyond any doubt that neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities nor things present and threatening nor things to come, nor powers, neither height, depth, any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God which is in Christ Jesus. I want to zone in in two things out of this verse. Death. Death separates us from our loved ones. I think some of us here have, you know, experienced death in their families. And what death does, it also, it, it also happens in all the families. And it leaves scars to many. And to some of the people, when death comes, it's a relief because of abusive relationships. Now, if we speak of death, Jesus says nothing will ever separate us from God's love through Jesus Christ. Amen. And I also want us to look at life experiences at a time bound. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 and to 8. Please read on it at home. There is time for everything. Seasons of life, we have spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And these are bound to take place. We cannot shy away from those seasons. We all have to go through them. It's nature. But can I tell you something? When each and every season comes in our lives, we must understand that it's for just for a moment. We need to understand that when it is summer, winter, I mean autumn is coming. And when it's autumn, winter is on its way. And as well as when it is winter, spring is on its way. Now we also as God's children, need to understand that these seasons are meant for us. L let me leave it at that. They are all meant for us. At times we feel like, why God has left me? It is a season. Those who are in summer, <laughs> please prepare yourself. Autumn is on its way. The Bible says, we must learn from the ants. They know how to gather during summer. The Bible also say these things, hey, you find them in the poor man's house as well in the palaces. I've got lots of them. I tried to utilize a blue death, but blue death doesn't blue death them. Now, in summer, they gather as much as they can because they know that winter it's on its way. They didn't need to expose themselves to any danger of, 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 of uh, cold. Now, as God's children, we need to ensure that darkness, when it comes, we need to understand that we are confident of this, that it will dawn in the morning. The Bible says, weeping may last for a night, but when it's at night, you feel like, God, I don't see you coming through for me. I've been praying and praying and praying and praying. It seems like all my prayers are not being heard. I was talking to another young man who is a chartered accountant. He said to me, Pastor, help me out here. I'm angry with your God. I said, 
What is it? He said, I've been praying and praying and praying and praying, but God never answers my prayers. Please tell me, what am I supposed to do? I said, hold on one more time. Hold on one more time. Because it's about to dawn in your situation. I don't know what you're going through, but it's about to dawn in your situation just press in one more time just press in one more time just press in one more time keep on pressing keep on pressing because it's about to dawn in your situation you'll forget about what you've gone through because the heavens will answer your situation i've been through situations I'm still going through situations. But one thing I know, he who has started a good work in my life, he who has started a good work in my life, there are principalities that will fight that good love of God in your life. At times you feel like God no longer loves you because of the principalities that have been unleashed over your life but God says I still love you despite what is taking place I still love you your parents can love you but they cannot love you the way Jesus loves you at times parents will weep us but for themselves but God when he weeps us is for his love and for our good God's children, I need to say to you, when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, even the lions were at peace. They were at peace. God took over. God took over. Nature had to come down to the authority of the voice of God because in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth even the lions were the part of the creation and the Bible says they had to cooperate with the heavens and they became a friend of Daniel even King Darius came in the morning and said tell me something is he still there? Can I say something to you? Your enemies have plotted good things, evil things. But can I tell you something? <laughs> Just leave it at that. When Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach were in the Farida, I mean, if in the, in, the, in the fire, the Bible says a fourth man was there. Hey! A fourth man was there. And that fourth man in your situation is the king of glory. He will never leave you, neither forsake us, because he is the great I am God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Praise the Lord. How he demonstrates his love for us. How does God demonstrate his love for us? Number one, through a gift of life, forgiveness, without prejudice, through restorative and being a good shepherd. Gift of life. It brings such a great joy when families, they receive a baby, like our beloved family here. It was a great joy when they received the, the little one into earth. And it brought the families together from both sides of the families. We all bring people to, they all, we all bring people to their purposes when they are born. God took time to make you and me. God took his own time. Think about it. All the animals were there. But when it came to me and you, 
He said, let us. He never said, nature we release. But he said, let us. He was talking to himself, his cabinet. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. You are so special before God. We are all so special before God. Nature cannot compare. Nature cannot compare to what God has made us to be. We are his image. Tell your neighbor, when you look at me, no longer look at me with the eye of the flesh. I am the image of my father. Can I say this? I might look like I'm a Kalat. <laughs> I may look like I'm an Indian. I may look like I'm an African. But one thing that you need to understand, I am the image of my father. God continues to demonstrate his love by forgiving our sins. God's love is full of mercy. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. It says, but God is rich in mercy. He loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only God, God's grace, that you have been saved. You know what grace means? Favor. We have all received God's favor. You know, at times when we, when we used to grow up, we used to say, ah, when I'm giving you a favor. <laughs> now, we have been saved by God's favor. We did not deserve it. No, no, no. Don't think you deserve it. Jesus had to be a sacrificial lamb so that me and you, who deserve to be called the sons and daughters of God today. Maybe you do not understand who you are. You are called by your father as his peculiar. You are called by your father as his holy uh, people. Let me tell you, don't undermine yourself because your father, when he looks at himself, he says, that is my image. Amen. Though you may sin, Though we may sin, but if we come back to the altar of God and say, Ah, Lord, hey, I have biased. Please forgive me. He still have his hands open to forgive us. God overlooks our sins when we repent. God will always, God will always, People may judge you, but when you come before the altar and say, Lord, I've messed up. I've messed up, Father. Please forgive me. There is a song that we used to sing that there is still a room at the altar for you. There is still a room. Even if it's tough, there is still a room at the altar for me and you to say, Father, forgive me. Jesus said, Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. It is because what God is doing for us. His love is without prejudice. Many people in our lives they relate to people according to their cultural practices, according to their racial boundaries. But with God, it doesn't happen that way. His love cuts across all the cultures. It cuts across all the practices of men. God does not look at you that you are Indian practicing eating curry. No. He cuts across that. That you're an African, you like Muhodu. God cuts across that because of his love. God's love is so deep. I cannot on my own comprehend it. 
is too much. So is with eternal life. Every time I think about eternal life, my mind just blows out. God's love is restorative. God will always restore his children. Somebody might say, ah, me, things have been bad. I doubt if God will ever restore my life. I know of people who have killed people. Number of people have they killed in their lives. They've hijacked people's cars. They've ruined people's families. But can I say something? God still can restore. God still can restore. God is a good shepherd. That's his love for us. A good shepherd knows the diet of his sheep. And he'll always leads them beside still waters. I need to say to all of us, there is no hunger with God. You will never lack anything if we choose to let God be a good shepherd. Over. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Another version says, I have everything I ever needed. It depends how do you ask from God. He has everything for me, he has everything for you. On my status, on my WhatsApp, I say, God is the only provider for me and my family. And it stands that way. And I will never allow another person to interfere with that because when people help you, they say, mm, don't see him being like, it's me. But if God is your provider, he'll bring provision from the east. He'll bring provision from the using people who will never talk about your affairs because... He is your provider. How are we to respond to this generous love of God? I said it already. We need to repent. We need to devote our lives to God. Be a good Samaritan. I'm zoned to that uh, Luke chapter 27, verse 23. Uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 25 to 37. It's a long story. It's about that man who passed by um, a man who was being knifed and almost killed. The priests went by and overlooked him. Everyone who went down overlooked him. And the Bible says, and this good Samaritan came. And he said, what happened? And he took him and he bandaged him. He took him to a hotel, and he gave an instruction, please take care of this man until he fully recovers. God is recover. God is sending people in your situation to come and restore your life. He's coming with provision that will ensure that after people that you think you know have passed you by, God is bringing somebody that you never thought he will bring by and he will ensure that that person becomes your rescuer in your situation. Because our God uses things that man overlooks. God will use people that people overlooks. Your miracle is on its way. Your miracle is coming. Somebody is about to cross your path. Just stay in there because God is able. The forgiveness thing, Bazalwan, it's very important. God forgives us. We need to also forgive because we understand that the Bible says, he who says loves God and does not forgive his own brother, he doesn't have the love of God. We are to forgive one another. That's, what, that's our assignment as God's children. If we do not forgive one another, we have made the work at Calvary nothing, or we have nullified what God has done on Calvary's mountain. 
Because when God gave us Jesus was to restore man to himself. What a gift of life. When God said, I forgive you, I don't, I forget your sins as far as the east and the west are concerned, so have I dispersed your sins. There is a call to love one another. Embrace love. A few days ago, we were celebrating 18 years in marriage. Yeah, some people thought I was not married. Yes, 18 years in marriage. <laughs> and it took me back to the vows that we, we made with my wife. And we began to revisit them and say, are we really doing what we committed ourselves to? We interrogated one another. And we said, this we did not do. This we did. How can we improve that situation? And it was about a call to love. The Bible says, if we love one another, if we love one another, we know God. For it is a command of God that we love one another. If we say we love God, there has to be some fruits that we produce. And those is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There is no law against these things. There is no law. Love me, I'll love you. Be joyful for me, I'll also be joyful for you when you, you get something good. These are the fruit I remember when I attended another conference. And <laughs> the apostle uh, said that day, as a child of God, when we come to you, we must pull out fruits and we say, mm, they are sweet because you carry the essence of God's presence in your life. I want to say the following before I close. There was a young man whom the church, he was a pastor's son. How blessed to be a pastor's son. He was about to get married. And the church board came to that meeting. And they said to him, since you're about to get married, do you know that this lady you're about to marry to, she was a prostitute. Or see, I have to marry a prostitute. This is a real story. And he said, I, I hear you all, but you're undermining the blood of Jesus that has cleansed this woman. There are people seated here today who have scars in their lives, who have been ill-treated. When they got themselves into relationships, people took advantage of them. But this morning, God is in the business of restoring each one of us. If you are here this morning, you have not experienced the generous love of God, I would like you to stand. If you say, I need to experience this generous love that you are talking about, please stand together with me. I need to pray with you. You've been rejected by society because people reject you. Please stand. I know some of us are very shy, but it's okay. I'm going to ask Pastor Adrian to come and pray. May the good Lord bless you all. Let us pray.
Father, we receive your love. We receive your loving kindness. We receive the work of salvation that comes by your love. And as the man of God has ministered to us this morning, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from your intention, your purpose, your plan for us. And this morning, if many of us are facing difficulties, if there are things that are standing between you and ourselves, we pray that in the mighty name of Jesus that you will deliver, redeem, and you will restore. Strongly, we have received the word that God is a God of restoration. He's a God that can recover us from where we have been. So this morning, King Jesus, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all of our worship. And we thank you for your love. Restore us to the joy of our salvation. Restore us to the joy of your loving kindness in and through all of us. And we bless you this morning that we walk in the right relationship with you and the righteous relationship with others. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.